Good evening, I'm Neil Bedford. I'm the Landscape Conservation Area Manager for Essex Wildlife Trust and I look after the reserves in the northwest of the county. One of my favourite pastimes is actually coming down and looking for bats. So we've come down to Dedham Mill Pond. I think this is a fantastic place to see bats. Behind me you can see the uh, grass fields, they're horse grazed and also cattle grazed and the dung from the horses and cattle produce uh, a fantastic food source for insects and also we're right by, down by the river so the river also produces lots of uh, insects from the larvae that emerge from the river and above me and all around me are plenty of midges and bats love midges it's reckoned in a typical evening a pipistrelle bat will consume about 3,000 midges. That's quite a lot and I wish there were more bats so there would be less midges for me. To help this evening I have my trusty little bat detector which is here. It has an ultrasonic microphone at the uh, tip there and that will pick up the um, voice of the bats. They um, sort of shout out an ultrasonic sound which is beyond our hearing and this little gadget here turns it into a noise that I can recognise and this will help me identify the bats we um, hopefully see this evening. I've got it set around 4850 kilohertz, which is the midpoint frequency between the common pipistrel bat which has a peak frequency of 45 kilohertz, and the soprano pipistrel bat which has a peak frequency of 55 kilohertz. and hopefully you can tune up and down to try and find the deepest tone to try and identify the bats as well. If we're also very lucky as well, we might see, uh, spot some other bats as well. And along with my bat detector and my trusty guide, this will help us identify any bats we see this evening. One thing I like about this trusty guide is it has the emergence times after sunset. We've arrived just prior to sunset and some bats will come out just before sunset. Other bats I uh, prefer to come out when it's a bit darker and um, when you marry up your um, bat detector along with time after sunset helps you identify the bats as well. There's also a cunning little guide here that shows me um, the types of habitat the bats like to fly around in as well. So together with these two that should be really good for an evening's uh, bat entertainment. Um, I've also got as well a little recording device that's connected to my um, bat detector. This will help um, me record any sounds that I see and so if I have difficulty identifying the bats in the field then I can take this away and study it at home on my laptop. However, I have also brought my laptop with me as well and this together with all the other instrumentation helps produce um, oscilloscope and you can then see the uh, call of the bat and help identify the peak frequency as well. So let's hope for some good bat watching this evening. It's now about half past nine. It's taken a while but we've had our first bat call. It was just a quick fleeting little uh, couple of chirps from the bat and the sound on the bat detector was quite a wet sort of slappy sound. So it's probably one of the two pipistrels, either the common or soprano pipistrel. But unfortunately, it was so far away, it was quite quiet, and we didn't have the bat flying around long enough to be able to identify it. But hopefully, it started to come out. As you can hear, we have a bat flying around above us. It's going in and out of the trees, and sometimes you can hear a little feeding buzz as well, where it gets close to an insect and it puts out a pulse of uh, quick succession calls. This bat 
is the Soprano Fibberstool Bat. It has a peak frequency of 55 kilohertz. And also, if I stop talking, you can see the calls on the laptop. We can see the bat flying around above our heads and I find it fascinating the way the bats fly. They seem to change direction almost at 90 degrees and that's because their wings are made up of, a bit like our hands, of long fingers and in between each of our fingers is a membrane and the flexibility of our hand gives the bat that unique ability to suddenly change direction almost in an instant. And you can see how it's flying around above our head, changing direction, and you can hear the little feeding buzzers as well. So it's picking up insects and then suddenly deciding to change direction to try and catch and eat that insect. Absolutely amazing. And it's all happening right above our head. We've now come to the other side of the bridge. It's now much darker, probably about an hour after sunset. And uh, that's when the door Benton's bats tend to come out. They tend to come out about 40 minutes, 50 minutes after sunset. And um, I love this part of the river because it's less uh, shaded by trees. And in the reflection of the water, sometimes you can see door Benton's bats just skimming inches above the top of the water. They're known as the water bat and they have big hairy feet. And they're looking for insects that are on the surface of the water and then they echolocate them, come along and they scoot them up with their feet and whilst they're flying they stuff the insect into their mouth. Dorbenton's bats have a different call to the pipistrel bats. I describe the pipistrel bats as wet and slappy. Dorbenton's bats have very much like a, a metallic, almost machine gun like call. Now I'm not sure if you can hear it on my bat detector there are Dorbenton's bats here, but I think they're very much in the distance. And I can't really see them skimming above the water. Normally in times without Covid, the restaurant will be busy and there are a lot more lights. And the lights in the restaurant reflect down on the water and that's easily when you can see the Dorbenton's bats. But hopeful we might be able to see one still. We need to look very carefully down close against the water.